Brock the Yahawa, Brockatha, Yahawasha, Brock the Yahawa, Brockatha, Yahawasha, Bashem, Rakakwadash, the honor to the apostles, the elders, salutations to you, sincere brothers, teaching in truth and in sincerity. This lesson will be entitled, The Nations Are Mad, is not talking about one third. Lord will, you are edified. All right, um, just came across a video, and you had a great millstone camp, and a, a brother actually spoke and stated that, therefore, the nations are mad, referring to the scripture of Jeremiah 51 and verse 7. It's talking about one-third of our people, and he's going off. And also, um, you know, brothers have to be careful in what they say. You know, and if you don't know a particular scripture, ask an elder brother to come in and break it down. All right. It's no point of winging something, because when you do that, all right, you get it wrong more than likely. And therefore, the sheep will be misled. It's it's extremely important when we prophesy, when we speak, we know what the fuck we're talking about. This is serious business. Jeremiah 51 and verse 7. Babylon have been a golden cup in the Lord Yahweh's hand. Babylon is what? Modern day America. Golden cup. All right. Golden meaning means what? America has that top position in leading these other nations to sin. Cup in the Hebrew is symbolic for America's portion, America's lot, America's assignment. Babylon, modern day America, have been a golden cup in the Lord Yahweh's hand that made all the earth drunken, how so? Via its philosophies, going into America's influence, and therefore these other nations assimilate to the standard or mannerisms of America that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine, such as democracy, so-called Christianity, feminism, homosexuality, and so on and so forth. Therefore, the nations are mad. Why? Because the end result is what? It will not benefit them. There's no gain. There's no profit. Because when Yahweh Shah comes, he is going to destroy this entire system. And therefore, the nations will be extremely mad. And they're getting roused up at this time frame. That's why you see, I think it was Moab who stated that they will no longer have so-called metrosexual men being displayed via the public, such as their media outlets and so on and so forth. Therefore, the nations are mad. Let's get... Psalm 110 and verse 1. A Psalm of David. The Lord Yahweh said unto my Lord Yahweh Shah, Sit you at my right hand until I make your enemies thy footstool. And once Yahweh Shah gets that green light from Yahweh, guess what? This system will be destroyed. And by default, Esau's rulership would end. And their joint heirs will fall as well for being in concert with the nation of Edom. And let's just prove that these other nations are allies with Edom. Let's get Luke chapter 16. And we can go into the parable of Lazarus and the rich man. Let's 
Luke 16 and 19, there was a certain rich man. Now, this rich man is a representation for the nobility of Edom. All right. The international bankers that control this entire system, which was clothed in purple and fine linen, meaning what? Symbolic for they have that stead of rulership. Purple means royalty. To have a luxurious lifestyle and far sumptuously every day. Verse 20, and there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. Now, Lazarus is symbolic for the nation of Israel, which was laid at his gate full of sores. Full of sores is symbolic for the curses spoken of in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, beginning at the 16th verse on down. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover, the dogs, these other nations, these heathen nations, came and licked his sores. Meaning what? They were allies with the nation of Edom and Esau's rulership at this present time. That's why you see so-called Chinese people, all right, having... Um, Chinese restaurants in Jake's neighborhoods and also selling weave in Jake's neighborhoods. All right. That's why you have Elon and Ishmael owning gas stations in Jake's neighborhood. All right. This is spiritually designed by Yahweh Bashem El Shah and also support validity of the scriptures of how these other nations come over here and are able to establish a form of paradise within Esau's rulership. Psalm 83 and verse 2. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. Verse 3, they have taken crafty counsel against thy people, Israelites, and consulted against thy hidden ones, Israelites. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. And that's literal. Verse 5, for they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate, confederate against thee. Meaning what? These other nations have aligned themselves with the nation of Edom. All right. They are confederate with the nation of Edom. Verse 6. The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites of Moab and the Hagarines, Jebal or Jabal and Ammon and Amalek, the Philistines, with the inhabitants of Tari, Assur, also is joined with them. They have hoping the children of Lot, Salah. All right, further proof that these other nations are joint heirs with the nation of Edom. This is Lamentations 2 and 15. All that passed by clapped their hands at thee. They hiss and wag their head at the daughter of Jerusalem, referring to the entire nation of Israel, being, being in that lowest state, saying, Is this the city that men call the perfection of beauty, the joy of the whole earth? All thy enemies have opened their mouth against thee. They hiss and gnash the teeth. They say, we have swallowed her up. Meaning what? We have this entire nation in captivity. 
Certainly, this is the day that we have looked for, we have found, we have seen it. And this is how you apply this scripture at this present time. Okay? Now, the reason why Jeremiah was lamenting is because he's seen the destruction of our nation when the Mosai utilized the Babylonian Empire to take us down, the southern kingdoms. Okay, which also had a sprinkle of the northern kingdoms there as well. All right. However, if we are applying the scripture now, this proves that all thy enemies include the nation of Edom and these other nations, which are um, confederate with the nation of Edom. Okay. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28 and verse 44. It starts in verse 43. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. Now apply this scripture to this time frame right now. Look how high Esau has got. And guess what? It's his blessing. So Esau's blessing was designed for him to rule which makes his blessing, his heaven, and our hell. And at the same time frame, you have these other nations, all right, that are joint heirs with Esau. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. Now compare Jake coming to the Americas, and look how Jake has to struggle. Now, when you see Elam and Ishmael, come to America, they are productive. They come here to be doctors, researchers, scientists, and so on and so forth. Further proof that these curses, all right, is only activated upon the nation of Israel at this time frame. However, they are lifting. Why? Because we are towards the end of Esau's rulership. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. Verse 44, he shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. And that's how it is at this present time if we apply this scripture. Esau is the head, and we are the tail in Esau's kingdom. Jeremiah 51 and verse 7. Therefore, the nations are mad. All right? Because the end result is they will no longer profit. All right? They are going down as well. They will be subject to 1,000 years of hardcore slavery spoken of in Revelation, the book of Revelation. Therefore, the nations are mad. It's not talking about one-third of our people. All right? One-third of our people has nothing to do with the nations are mad. Lord will, you are edified. Shalom.